Hello, everyone. Uh, we are live. Um, this is the the very first uh, Facebook Live from Harvard Community School, uh, Unit District 50 in the 2018-19 school year. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Corey Tafoy. I am the proud superintendent of Harvard District 50. And in our very first Facebook Live of the year, I'm here with Andrew Walters. Uh, Andrew is our new athletic director at Harvard High School. And we thought, because um, Harvard is a really proud town and has a lot of uh, pride in our athletic and activity programs, and we thought, uh, what better way to introduce um, Andrew than to do this? Because people will, are anxious to know uh, what his idea and what to do in the programs. What are we going to do? What's in mind? Uh, because I think everyone uh, here does love the Hornets, by golly. And so we want to do as much <coughs> as we can. So. Um, Andrew, why don't you just introduce yourself to us a little bit, tell us a little bit about your background and um, where you've been and why coming to Harvard uh, sounds like a good thing to do. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm honored. I didn't realize I was the first one of 2018. That's yeah, amazing. That's right. Um, so yeah, Andrew Walters, I came here from Belvedere High School um, where I was actually born and raised about 20 minutes down the road in Caledonia, Illinois, just uh, west on 173. So I was familiar with the, the town of Harvard um, and kind of the the... I guess the town in general and how proud of a town it's always been. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew a few people who had who had worked out this way, um, a math teacher that we have um, at the high school, and then I worked with uh, Mr. Hobbs for a while. Um, so when this position opened, it was something I wanted to do. I've been involved in athletics my whole life, whether it was as an athlete or a coach. Um, so again, when I got my administra administrative uh, license, I, I knew I wanted to be an athletic director and the job opened. and. So I, uh, I took the opportunity and now I'm here. So I'm excited to be here. A uh, lot of proud traditions in Harvard that, that I'm hoping that we can kind of um, remake or rebuild. So. Uh, I, I already know the answer to this, but tell everyone a little bit about your family and you uh, as a person. I know that <laughs> that's a big part of your life as well. Yeah. Yes, it is. So this summer was, uh, this summer was an incredible summer for, for me and my family. Uh, my wife and I had our first child. Um, who's now two and a half months old and she sleeps through the night, so we're the luckiest parents ever. Um, and then we also bought our house uh, about a half an hour before we had our daughter. Our realtor called us and said, hey, just so you know, you just bought a house. Um, so that, that was a pretty great day, uh, May 21st of, of 2018. So, um, so. It's, been, it's been a crazy summer, um, starting here July 2nd and then dealing with, at that point in time, a, a month and a half year old, or I don't even know where we're at now. I can't, I can't do the math, but um, it just been, it's been an awesome summer, but exhausting. Yeah, so. absolutely. That, those are great memories. Uh, getting this job that you, know, you think a lot about a big administrative, your first administrative job, and then you get it and have a baby, a new house. <laughs> I mean, anything more we can uh, throw your way this summer? Wow. That's what I say. Life's going to be easy here shortly. So. All right, sure. Yeah. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> um, one of the things, though, that I think is part of your attraction is that relationship you have with Mr. Hobbs. You know, talk to us a little bit about that because I think um, people got a sense of you know what uh, Mr. Hobbs is trying to do at Harvard High School, and something that he must have talked about or your history with him must have kind of led you to believe. You know, I can buy into that. I see what he's trying to do, and maybe just talk about what that relationship meant to you and why that's important. Yeah, yeah I was a head coach um, at Belvedere while Mr. Hobbs was the athletic director, um, and he actually was kind of somebody I leaned on going into administration. So I was a dean of students as well at Belvedere for a little bit, and I talked to him about that. Um, he called me crazy, you know, for a few weeks, um, <laughs> but I, I I didn't listen to that. I took I took um, his advice and said, you know what, let's do this. Um, and became a dean, and it was a great job. We had a, a lot of success at Belvedere, and there's a lot of exciting things going on. Um, but when he left and came to Harvard, I stayed in touch with him. And again, I just I believe in his leadership um, and what he stood for. Um, and it's as simple as how can we help students? Um, I mean, I, that's the the easiest thing that I can boil this down to. And how can we build future leaders? Um, and that's what I'm all about. Um, I just had a couple of conversations with students yesterday. Like, man, I'm not here for the stuff on my desk. I'm here for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, and while I, I might have to be here till nine o'clock because I sit here and have a two hour conversation with you, that's why we're here. So when we talk about what's our why, um, I think with Mr. Hobbs and myself, it, it's real when we say we're here for the students. Oh, that's awesome. That's the old uh, Simon Sinek is, you know, start first start with yeah. a why. And so, you know, maybe talk to us a little bit about that because 
Uh, obviously, you were an athlete. Um, what were kind of your athletic, what's your athletic background and things you did? And uh, it's okay to brag a little bit. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm not good about, at that. Tell us about yourself. Um, so in high school, I was a three-sport athlete. Um, it's one of the things that made high school easy for me because um, there was always somebody on me in terms of, you know, making sure you're getting to class on time, um, getting your homework done, and it was very structured. Um, so high school came easy to me. I, I played football, I was a wrestler, and then I played baseball. Um, favorite sport was baseball, I think. I mean, it, it's tough to judge, but um, that's what I went on to coach. But my most successful was probably football and uh, wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, once I, I got done with that, I went to college, and I was not ready for college. I didn't have the, the typical college experience. Um, I couldn't make my own decisions. I was making poor decisions, wasn't going to class. Um, and it was two people really that pulled me aside, former coaches um, and, and two very good friends of mine that kind of kicked me in the butt and said, dude, start jumping through the hoops and get this thing done. Um, I didn't have any intentions of going into education. I wanted to be a physical therapist. Um, I was hoping I could work with uh, athletes in that, in that field, um, but it didn't pan out. And so I started coaching for my old wrestling coach, Dan McNames, uh, and that was kind of what started the whole education thing. Mm -hmm. of, why don't you think about getting your educa education right. degree? And then the same thing with a former athletic director of ours um, and a very good friend of mine and Brian Huey he said the same thing. And he was a kid, he was a guy that knew how to like push my buttons mm -hmm. and, and tell me I couldn't do something. And if, if, if you want to know how to get under my skin, tell me I can't do it. And we're going to figure out a way to get it done. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, he, both of those two and my parents, obviously, um, my whole family really, uh, really pushed me to, you know, finish, mm -hmm. just finish. My parents actually owned a trucking business for five years and they offered me a job um, when I was in my junior year in college, not true junior year. I'd been in for about eight years at that point, it felt like. Scholastic. Right, 30, uh, right. 30, uh. But uh, they had offered me a position, and I just said, you know, I can't do this. No, like, I can't give up all this time. I'm kind of pot committed. Um, and so I finished, and now I'm where I am. So talking to kids that struggle with school, I can resonate with that yeah. um, or don't like school. I wasn't a big fan of it, but, again, it came easy to me. Um, college didn't, and so it, I can resonate with those kids that struggle and how important um, – people are for kids and athletics did that for me because of the people I was exposed to. That's awesome. Because we, we do talk a lot about how we we really value that uh, extracurricular athletic experience, um, how it enhances the enjoyment. But um, as a former you know high school athlete and college athlete myself, when I was in season, I always did better in school and I when I was not in season, I just thought I had all this time and it didn't go. So why do you think that is? I mean, I know there's a lot of studies that back that up, that GPAs improve and people that are involved in more than one uh, activity, they, their GPAs rise with the amount of business. Why, why do you think that is? My belief on it is it gives you a purpose. Um, every day you wake up, you have a purpose. You may hate school and you may not like math or English or science or whatnot, but you have a purpose of why you have to be there. Um, and we can sell kids on the importance of education through athletics. And that's one of the things that I believe in and I strongly believe in. Um, and I, I'm talking to kids again today, like if you can't get it done in the classroom, then let's not even worry about, about the athletics. Um, the, the academics are going to take you way farther than athletics ever will. Um, and I'm a perfect example of that. I went to, I went to college at Augustana. Um, that's where I started out, played football and baseball there. And it was tough when I left because I had left because I was immature, truthfully. Um, but I told my coaches it was my grades. Well, little did I know they had access to all my grades, and it wasn't because of my grades. Mm -hmm. um, but once I didn't have that anymore, it was when I really did start to struggle. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any type of structure. So um, when I look at kids now and, and say, you need to get involved, it, it's easier to get them to buy into what we're all about um, and what we're pushing and selling. So in, in that regard, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, um, and I think every school has this goal, but how do we in Harvard get more kids into experiences and how do we create programs that are likely to you know help them and be successful i mean we we don't judge programs necessarily always on wins and losses but we want it to be a good experience <laughs> for them and sometimes wins happen just because of having a good experience so what are we going to do to enhance um, the amount of opportunities available to our students and then the quality of the experience they have with, within those because I think those are things that can go hand in hand. Yeah, and my, and my first vision with that is we've just got to promote it better, number one. Um, and number two, you, unfortunately, we have to tell people why it's important. 
and we've got to make kids understand why these things are important um, because time is so finite. We don't have a bunch of time. Kids have to work jobs, mm -hmm. and I understand that. Um, they have to help their families out. I, I completely understand that. But if we can sell parents and kids on the, the importance of academics and activities, and, and that's why I tell people all the time, my goal for Harvard is that we have 100% participation at the high school level. And it, it is, it, that's a huge, you know, we used to call them BHAGs in Belvedere, but um, big, big hairy, hairy audacious, audacious goals. goals, there we go. That's right. Um, and that is one of those things, but at the same time, people always think I'm talking about athletics and, you know, I want, you know, 95 football players. That may not be a reality, but I can get, you know, 15 chess players or mm -hmm. um, scholastic bowl, you know, in, individuals or somebody that just joins a club. That's all part of being being involved in your school. Mm -hmm. um, what I always like to tell people is we can guarantee kids a couple of things. We can guarantee them a warm or sometimes when it's hot outside, cool, <laughs> well-lit place where they're going to get two meals a day. Mm -hmm. um, so no matter what's going on in their lives outside of our four walls, we can control what happens with them in the building. Mm -hmm. um, and they may not always like the answers that happen inside that building, sure. but there's people there that care about them. Right. Um, and that's what we have to really sell to them and give them the important. And when I, when I say, what's your why? Not only from a teacher or educator standpoint, but from a student. What's your why? What do you want? Yeah. Um, and if we can sell that and promote that, um, that's how we're going to get to that 100%. That's a process. Right. Um, but I believe in that. One thing that happened that I think we should talk about in this is um, to kind of help complement that goal or for us to achieve that goal was a reduction in the fees that our athletes have to and our um, students and activities have to pay to be involved in that. And that was a big decision made by our board. And I mean, talk about that a little bit and what you think that means to the opportunity and the likelihood that kids do participate. Yeah. Um, I mean, reducing from $125 down to 75 is huge. And then our directs are going from, um, or down to 25 for our direct cert. I, I think it takes away a lot of the excuse of, I, of why I can't. Um, and we can give them ways that they can. Um, I understand finances are tight. Um, I understand some families struggle with $25. I 100% understand that, but we have things in place that we can, we can uh, manage that now. Mm -hmm. um, so it just takes away one excuse. Now, would I love to see it free someday? I'd love to, mm -hmm. but that's not where we're at. Our Board of Education has done a great job in committing to activities and athletics, and I'm very thankful for that. The other big thing that they did was reduce our, um, or not reduce, completely cut the cost for yeah. our students That's gonna to be fantastic. attend games. Yeah. Um, you can't beat that. We don't, we don't have to charge kids $3 to get into a, bag, uh, into a game. I know in my pocket right now I have $3 on me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if you ask me as a student, hey, spend your $3, go to the game, but I'm going to sit there for two and a half hours, I can't eat. I can get nothing yeah. to drink. Right. So, it, again, it takes that out of the way. It becomes very cheap entertainment. And, and again, we want to keep our kids in that building right. so I think that's a huge piece that our board is really um, committed to and hopefully we can continue to to support athletics and activities good another question I have for you uh, you've had a lot of coaches influence you in life and now in this role you'll be looking at you know hiring coaches deciding head coaches and mentoring coaches mm -hmm. and um, guiding them to improve what are some of the things you value in good coaches and what do good coaches look like in your mind? Because sometimes people identify the program, not necessarily by the kids that kind of come and go through years, but by the coach that might stay. <clears throat> Talk about, you know, what, what's the importance of having a good coach or sponsor? The, the single easiest thing that I can look for in a coach is what do you do for kids and how willing are you to be flexible with kids? Um, and that's hard when you have a proud community um, that's been successful in the past and you go through your times where you're struggling. You want to look at a coach and say, well, this coach would have done this or this coach would have done that. We can't look at it like that. Um, we're not the same, but our coaches do a great job, what I've seen this fall, of being there for our kids. We might not always agree on what they're doing as a, as a community or even as an athletic director, and we have talks about that. But um, what we have to understand is those people don't get paid much. They take a lot of time and make a lot of sacrifices from their family and their jobs, because not all of them work in this district, mm -hmm. um, to be there to support our kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not an agenda. It's very real. I mean, they're there for kids. Um, yeah. And that's awesome to see. Um, in terms of development, I'm big on coaches' education. Um, and if I can help you know, bridge that gap of education, I'm going to do it. But if I can get them to the places they need to be to develop, we're going to do that as well. Okay. So let's give it, let's, let's get into the kind of the fun stuff. Uh, I don't have my, um, 
my high school fantasy football team <laughs> picked yet. So maybe uh, or just talk about the programs, you know, and, and kind of what you're seeing already from the fall, um, the coaches and some of the things going on, and give us a little preview of what uh, what we could get excited <clears throat> about this fall for Hornet uh, sports and activities. Well, let's start off. Who should we start with? Let's start with cheer. Cheer numbers have exploded, which was was great to see. Um, I want to say we're up to 35 right now um, on the cheer roster, so that's awesome. We're getting more kids out. In fact, I just had a student come and talk to me today about the mascot because um, we, we do have a mascot this year, and we're going to put him out there for a little bit more game promotion. All right, um, nice. So that's awesome. Um, so it's nice to see what, what Hallie and Ashley have been able to do with that program this year, and we've got a lot of freshmen out, which, again, is a positive, Great. so we can build on that. Um, soccer, soccer numbers are, are creeping up there now, um, back to where we normally see them. They're right around 45 to 50. Um, we've had some late ads this week. Good. Um, so I was actually up on their pra at their practice right before I came here. Um, they're looking good. Victor does a really good job of keeping them moving, him and his staff. Um, there are very few times where guys are standing around, so I look forward to a great fall from them. Um, they're always competing for regional and sectional titles, so I would expect much of the same out of them. Good. Uh, girls golf. Girls golf numbers are up. We're up to 10 this year. Um, Doug's dealt with rosters of three for the past couple years. Yeah. So having 10 golfers, we're, we're fielding a full uh, varsity lineup and almost a full JV lineup at every event. And they've already um, been in competition. They right? have, yeah. yep, yep. Great. Um, and so the girls, in fact, their first time out, they, they shot five strokes off their best last year. Um, right off the bat. So wow. right off the bat, wow. we're, we're, we're jumping in. So And that's a testament to our kids. They played that's all good. summer and then coach working with them. Great. Um, so I look, for, I look forward to a really good year, and we're young in girls mm -hmm. golf as well. Mm -hmm. uh, boys golf, we're at 11 right now. Mm -hmm. um, very young there, very inexperienced, but talking to Coach Petska, he's very confident in terms of being a golf coach, and he's confident that if he can get kids that will listen and play the game, he can get them to become bogey golfers. And if you can have a full team of bogey golfers, you're going to compete my in dream. some matches. That's so, my dream to be yeah. a bogey golfer yeah. someday. <laughs> my dream is to not throw clubs. No. Um, I love the game of golf, so it's awesome talking to those guys. And the facilities that our golf teams get to use it is incredible. I mean, our, I was looking at our boys schedule the other day and I said this on the air with Jay um, our boys for $75 get to play some of the best courses around here yeah. um, not only Abbey Springs which is our current home course but uh, I mean they go down to Byron go to Oregon same with our girls you know they're gonna nice. play up at Abbey Springs a couple times this year um, and get that opportunity they went up there and practice today um, and it's just a test so it's gonna make them better great um, and then what am I missing here football cross country and cross football. country mm -hmm. um, football I'm looking for a big season. Uh, Coach Saylor's really, really positive. He stays on his guys, um, and we've got guys who, who need that. They need, they need football, and that's what's awesome to see, um, that his staff does a really good job um, about staying on guys, checking in with them nonstop. So um, if you ask our kids, they're ready to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's all a process. Are sure. they going to continue to work hard? Can we stay injury-free, right. which we have done so far, um, going into tomorrow for the black and gold game? Um, and then cross country um, numbers were a little bit low, but we did just add three kids, um, so that's a positive. And we can still go out for cross country. It's my shameless plug. Uh, come Good. see me. Let's get registered and get some more guys or guys and girls out um, for cross country, as that's a combined team. So it's not too late to go out either at the junior high level or high school level to say, oh, you know, I just never thought about that. And now that I know that it's uh, reduced fees to get in, it's not too late. Nope. Nope. So one of the things that I, I did to make a commitment, and it, and it can be difficult at times, but I'm going to leave the registration open through our a week after our first football game. Okay. That just makes it a clean cutoff date on the IHSA schedule. Um, so if you are interested, talk to the coach, get registered, and come on out. There's the um, flexibility from the coaches you are uh, hoping to see. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that's part of what it means to build a program, right. I think, too, is the realizing that you know when we've changed a mindset that we want more people, that may shift the, uh, people's understanding of you know when I should join up. Right, and we've got to get. I, I I don't think that's always great to be that flexible, but at the same time, if we want to build numbers, yeah. we've got to get them under our wing, um, especially the younger kids. Let's get freshman and sophomore out. Yeah, exactly. Now I know there is a senior athletic gold pass available. Um, who's that for? I mean, I'm getting all excited. Uh, get on the black and gold and get out uh, and watch our, our teams play. If I'm a senior, how do I get to the, uh, my hands on So we, those? we have the black and gold pass for senior, or the gold pass, I apologize, for senior citizens. Um, you can go on and register for that. 
um, on our athletics page, so on the, the Harvard High School athletics page. Um, you fill out a, a Google form, it gets sent to us, and we'll send you that, that card out. And that gets in, you into all regular season events at Harvard High School. Um, for free. So um, if you really enjoy coming to Harvard High School events and don't want to have to pay all the time, you can get on there, register, and we'll send it out to you with a little note and a schedule, um, as well as where you can look on 8 to 18 to uh, find updated, which is daily updated schedules, because unfortunately the pocket schedules changed as soon as we ordered them. Of course. Um, but they're, they're fairly accurate. But 8 to 18 um, on our website is always going to be the most up to date. Right. And then, um, so 8 to 18 is the source to go to find scores and updates on scores and all that. If if uh, Grandma wants to know the score of the, uh, the football game, she goes there on Saturday morning, can usually find that information? Yep. Our, our rule with our coaches is 8 to 18 on the coaches' end, uh, control panel is a little bit cumbersome sometimes, okay. um, especially if you're playing multiple games in a week. Um, football, you don't really have an issue with, but yes, check 8 to 18 um, for updates. Um, our rule is 48 hours, so if you check 48 hours after, after a contest and it's not posted, okay. give me a call. I'll, uh, we'll get okay. it done for you. We also actually have yeah. um, a, a sports zone. Um, it's IllinoisSportsZone.com that you can check um, scores as well. That'll have all conference scores and standings on oh, okay. it. So KRC went to that this year. Uh, that's good. Good. Well, Andrew, uh, we're uh, just thrilled you're with us, and your enthusiasm is kind of a, a, a contagious for all the rest of us. And uh, Friday night is black and gold, right? Yes. When does that start? Come on out. Uh, we have three events going on. Um, our boys' soccer team is going to start at um, 430 out on the junior high field. Um, they're just going to kind of go through, I, I call it a glorified uh, practice. They're going to scrimmage a little bit. Um, and kind of work through the scenarios that, that they need for their season. Um, volleyball is going to start at uh, five in the in the main volleyball. gym. I missed volleyball. I'm sorry, right. Megan. Let's we'll get to that in just a second. Um, so volleyball will start at five in the south gym, and then football will kick off at six. And that again will be kind of a glorified scrimmage, and it'll give us the opportunity to have some officials there to go over um, some points of emphasis this year. So back to Megan. Can't believe I forgot volleyball. Um, volleyball, we are going to have three teams this year, which is awesome. Um, numbers were down a little bit. Um, the coach would like them to raise, so that's, again, a little flexibility of having, having girls come out. Um, but we are going to field three teams, and we're excited about the season. So Good, good, good. good. Well, thanks. We look forward to doing that. On Friday night, we can get our new uh, Hornets gear, too. The uh, I know the Booster Club is been real they're great supporters yeah. they, uh, the this so amazing the work that they do we can get our uh, our swag for the year our spirit wear get some uh, food at the concession stand and start off a good fall season absolutely come on out uh, support our booster club if you can go to a meeting ever please do um, they they're held at Jay's Lanes my shameless plug um, but uh, go check that out our booster club this is one of the few booster clubs I've been around that doesn't charge for membership um, so really it's about going to a meeting and volunteering your time. They do a ton of work, um, and they don't just help athletics, which is a great thing. Um, they, I know they've chipped in for band um, and a bunch of the other activities throughout, not only the, the high school but the middle school as well. So um, please support our, our Booster Club, any opportunity you get. They will be there with all their swag tomorrow, um, so you can buy your sweatshirts and T-shirts and all, all that uh, good Harvard Hornets pride stuff. Um, and then they'll have some limited food options as well at the yeah. concession stand. And we'll have you back sometime to talk about you know some of the activity um, opportunities that exist. We've kind of talked more about athletics, but there's certainly a wide range of uh, other activities that our kids get involved in. All the clubs and activities, that's great too. And by the way, uh, try a number seven burger at Jay's Lands if you haven't had that yet. I have not. Oh, oh, incredible. It's my favorite uh, burger in town. Jay, I'm coming for you. <laughs> all right. Good. Andrew, let's have a great season. Thanks for Welcome having to me. Harvard. We're Thanks for having here. me. I look forward to seeing you all out at Harvard High School this year. Uh, if you ever have anything, come on out and, and see me. Shoot me an email or give me a call. Great. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, look for our next month edition. We'll uh, introduce ourselves to Kristen Cannon, our new Crosby uh, principal. We'll uh, meet her and learn a little bit more about what's going on at Crosby this fall. Thanks, everyone. Have a great year.